The space that you live in can completely change how you feel each day. Moving from South Wales to the busy city of London two years ago was challenging to say the least and I was super intentional about creating a space that was beautiful but still felt like home. Stylish yet practical and inviting all while sticking to my budget so in today's video I'm going to share with you my open plan living space, kitchen, dining area and balcony with all of the details on exactly how I designed it. The place was unfurnished when I first moved in with a black kitchen and it's safe to say that I have changed the place a lot. I have added sofas, rugs, mint green kitchen, a fireplace, mini window sills and they are all renter friendly DIY. I absolutely love the space as do the guests that I invite and it literally makes me smile and thank God each time that I walk in. It's a wonderful space for hosting, eating, writing, relaxing, having movie nights, and I am so grateful. If you wanna learn how I did it, then keep watching. So one of the first things that I added to the space were the windowsills. I call them windowsills because that's exactly what I wanted to create. I adore natural light, and while this room already has so much light, I really believe that you can't have too much, so I did my mirror trick. Wherever I live, I always put a mirror opposite the windows. This literally doubles the daylight in your space and makes it feel way larger. I opted for these gorgeous archway mirrors as they are so beautiful and gave that window kind of effect. I chose two just because there's a good amount of wall space and I love the symmetry of it. I adore plants and candles, so I fixed a shelf just underneath to make the windowsill and voila! I did get these mirrors and the shelves from BM Bargains. BM Bargains is a super cheap store here in the UK. By the way, I will put direct links to all of the items described in this video, so make sure you click on the description box below. Next up is this angled wall in the apartment. I did go back and forth about putting the TV on this wall, but I didn't like the angle and the visual distortion that that would create. Also, it would mean that the TV would be the first thing that you see upon entering the room and that you'd have to sit and watch TV with your back to the room door, which made me feel uncomfortable. I've since learnt that not having to sit with your back to a door is apparently a rule of feng shui. Pretty cool how it felt so intuitive. Anyway, I decided to hang up this beautiful piece of artwork. I adore the colour and the gentle mix of ink. I bought this years ago from my friend and artist Lois Secco. It's great to support artists directly. Definitely check out the link to this in the description box. Next up is the dining table. I really wanted a table that I could use for hosting. I have a big family and I love to cook dinners for birthdays and holidays. I also host my church weekly connect group and wanted to be able to seat everyone around the table comfortably. After a lot of searching, I settled on this dining table from Ikea. It's extendable and it can seat up to 10 people comfortably, 12 with a squeeze. Um, and I have two two-seater benches, which I keep in the hallway. So at the moment I have eight seats when I need it. I do plan on buying two more chairs to go on the end of the table, but I'm yet to find the perfect ones. So I'll hold off for now. It's super easy to extend, usually, sometimes I struggle, <laughs> but it's sturdy and I love the rounded corners as I have nephews who love to run full speed around my flat so it feels a lot safer. All of the table decor, the table runner, the cute countryside coasters, the ruffled napkins and placemats, they're all from Danelm. I'm from South Wales in the valleys and the countryside is honestly my happy place and there was a time when this living space was just a little bit too sharp and fancy and put together and while I do have that side to me, I'm actually more of a homely, cosy, settle down with a bowl of porridge and cutch on the sofa kind of girl. <laughs> so I wanted more colour and more texture in the room and adding a pop of pink and the different sensations from all the different materials really changed the feel of the space to being less like a museum and more like a home. I'm still finding the balance but I'm a big believer in designing a space and really listening to how you feel inside of it. Your space should be a reflection of you and we are all forever learning and evolving so while I'm sure one day I might not want a duck on my dining room table, right now it makes me smile. 
Moving on now to the living area, searching for the perfect sofa took forever. I got these two from Argos Habitat, I will link them below. It's genuinely a bargain because they are great quality. I really wanted a sofa that was above ground level as I love that classy look of air and space between the sofa and the floors. I also made sure to get a chair that had good depth. It's so important for me to be able to cut up comfortably and watch a film. I love how soft the material and it's also super comfortable. Sometimes I genuinely want to sleep here instead of my own bed. And my bed is pretty comfortable too, so that's saying something. People always worry about getting it stained since it's this cream white colour, but I've had parties with lots of guests and it's always held up pretty well for nearly two years now. I'll probably get them deep cleaned soon, but so far, cleaning it with a damp cloth has been more than enough to remove toddler's handprints, makeup stains, and food spills. The armchair is a gorgeous addition, it really closes the living space nicely, and it's such a comfortable seat for guests. The cushions I got from Donelm and John Lewis, and I did change them up recently by adding the sheep, but I love the pop of orange. My favourite colour is sunset orange, and I love how it ties in beautifully with the artwork on the wall. This rug took four attempts to get right. I bought and returned so many rugs. I really wanted the look of a jute rug, but I didn't want the high maintenance, you know, the rough feel and the cost. I wanted people to be comfortable, but not too comfortable, if that makes sense. I remember trying this fluffy and soft rug and it was so ridiculously soft that it would literally caress your toes and make you take a little intake of breath. And I honestly didn't want a guest to feel that comfortable in my living room, absolutely not. Extra soft rugs should be experienced in the safety and privacy of a bedroom only. I don't make the rules, I don't make the rules. Anyway, thankfully I miraculously found this beauty in the sales section of Ikea for £73. It is the Morham Rug Flat Woven Indoor Outdoor in Beige. It's literally perfect. It's the perfect colour, it's the perfect texture, look and feel. If you've ever bought a large rug, you know how expensive they are. They can cost hundreds of pounds. But larger rugs are incredible for tying a space together and really marking different living zones, especially in an open plan space. This rug is 200 centimetres by 300 centimetres and it is perfect. Now for the coffee table. I wanted something shiny and reflective as well as practical with two levels. This one from Denal is absolutely perfect. I love the way the mirror on the lower shelf reflects the light and the oval shape is just so delicate and pretty. The rustic bronze also makes me super happy. It was over my budget at the time, but in hindsight, I think it was totally worth it as it's a super classy piece that receives a lot of eye time and I love it. As for the side tables, these I don't love so much. I've just never been inspired to upgrade them. They were very cheap from BM Bargains, but they are very collapsible and awkward. While I love the two levels for the look, and for displaying plants, they just aren't the most stable and sometimes people almost knock them over when they're trying to move them because there's no way to fix the removable top plate to the stand. I actually rarely ever want to remove the top plate so it's just a bit annoying that it detaches in the first place. I'll leave some visual dupes in the link below though as they do look great. Now for the focal piece, the fireplace TV combo. I've done a whole video on this that you can see in the link above, but this one is one of my favourites. I became obsessed with the idea of having a fireplace, but in a flat it felt almost impossible. While I was looking for the perfect piece, the ones that I wanted that looked realistic cost thousands of pounds and I could not justify spending that much. I found this fireplace from Living and Home. I added the plaster to remove the plasticky feel and add some texture to it. I then put down some real bricks and real logs that I got from B&Q to accentuate that earthy feel. I tried and failed to mount the TV to the wall as it is actually a concrete wall, so I ended up getting a stand which is amazing. This TV stand literally allows me to turn the TV and watch it while cooking. I then place a speaker on the fireplace, hid all the wires behind it and voila. I like to keep the TV on art mode with the beautiful visuals that honestly make me feel so happy. Tina is a gorgeous plant from Ikea who I have fed and watered to the point where she is almost overgrown. I adore this plant pot from Sainsbury's home section. The elegance of it and the curved gold legs and again that distance between the bottom of the plant pot and the floor, it just really pleases me. 
this leads us out nicely onto the balcony. I love an egg chair. I used to have a single one, but then I was like, wouldn't it be super cute if me and my friends could snuggle up? So I got this double egg chair from BM Bargains because they are literally a bargain. And I picked it up and drove it home in my convertible, you guys. I assembled it all by myself, which I'm honestly pretty proud of. I am convinced that a convertible is a van if you're brave enough. Please don't judge the dying plants. I literally went away for two weeks and there was a heat wave while I was away. I do think they're salvageable, so they're hidden away from view for recovery. But anyway, let's ignore those. The main seating area. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. I used to have a little table and chairs, which was lovely to eat breakfast on, but honestly, it wasn't great for when I had friends around. I would always feel bad if a guest was sat on the chairs as they weren't very comfortable, but oh my goodness, this is perfect. I literally lie on this corner sofa, writing, reading, working, and it's so great because you can fit four people on it and it's the best place to relax. I got it from HomeSense on sale, link below. Also, by the way, I'm a big believer in buying outdoor furniture at the end of summer because it's always on sale and British summer tends to last long into September these days, so it is worth it. Back inside, I then have my beautiful favorite plant, Bonnie. I've had Bonnie for almost six years and I love her so much. Behind her is this lovely double pedal large bin. Sounds ridiculous to say you love a bin, but honestly, I love this bin. It looks super cute. It blends in with the aesthetic of the space in a humble way. And most importantly, it is huge. It has a 60 liter capacity, meaning I don't have to empty the bin as often. Now I know what you're thinking. Won't it start to smell? Nope. This bin literally closes so tight it doesn't let out any smells. Honestly, I would highly recommend. Now for this kitchen cabinet. This was not here when I moved in. It's like there's bins there right now, but it is basically loads of space. I can, I want to order just like a tall kitchen unit there so that there's no issues with storage because I've honestly almost filled, I've not filled the cupboards, but the only cupboards left like the awkward high up ones and I don't want to be that person. <laughs> but I am a big believer in kitchen space. As you may or may not know, I love to bake. I made my sister's wedding cake, my friend's wedding cake. So I need storage for all of my baking tins and tools. So I bought this tall kitchen cabinet from Aosom. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> it is perfect. The only thing I did was that I hired someone to assemble it and they took hours. It literally cost me more to get it assembled than it did to buy it. I'd recommend doing it yourself if you can. I had just moved and I was honestly just too emotionally, physically and mentally exhausted to even attempt to put it together myself. So yeah, it was worth it though because I love this cabinet for storing my tea for my guests and this gorgeous coffee corner that I use every single day. The vintage DeLonghi kettle, coffee maker and toaster combo are from Curry's. I've had them for around five years and they've lasted super well. Okay, the kettle does need replacing, but it's still cute. I'll leave links below. The main kitchen area, my goodness, you guys, I had this idea from my sister to change the kitchen to green using DC Fix. And let me tell you guys, I've never regretted anything so much in my life. Don't get me wrong, I definitely prefer this matte green to the previous shiny black. While the black was a look, it felt more like a man cave. It was also super shiny and very reflective, which wasn't great for filming videos and meant that every single thumbprint shouted out at you, making maintenance a little difficult, especially as someone who's a bit of a clean freak. But you guys, having to detach every single cupboard and cover it with DC fix paper took me so long. I would have to redo it over and over again to make sure there were no bubbles. And it honestly took me about four working days of straight up work. The only thing that got me through was the determination to not live in a half green, half black kitchen that just shouted, you gave up, you failed at me every single day. <laughs> it's great because it's renter friendly and can be removed. Uh, it was also super cheap and to be honest, I absolutely love the color, the look and the feel. But yeah, just know that this DIY is not for the faint hearted, no matter what the DIY girlies on YouTube tell you. I'm a DIY girl, but I'm more of like a humble, hire a handyman when it gets too hard, princess DIY kind of girly. So yeah, just bear that in mind. 
And that is pretty much everything. I really hope that you've enjoyed this tour of my living space. I'm honestly so grateful to God to live here. If there's anything that I've missed or if you have any questions, if you want to see my bedroom or my study, which I've recently redone, then just leave a comment below and I'll make sure to get back to you. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I am a medical doctor and I love sharing my life here on this channel. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a lovely day, whatever you're doing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!